Okay, so for our graffiti name tag designs, we are um, gonna start off sketching on a sketch paper because I want you guys to practice your spacing and figure out what style that you would like to do your letters in. So this packet I am gonna leave on the Google Classroom and it just has a bunch of different styles of bubble letters. Um, so, you know, whatever style works for you, you can use this as inspiration or maybe you have an idea for something completely different. You can be really creative and um, even use like one of these names as inspiration for how you're gonna make yours look. Uh, feel free to add like a bubble around it, however you wanna come at this. Um, but the main thing that I, I've noticed that students struggle with is spacing out their name. And so even if this isn't a method that you typically use, I want you to start off with this method. And the first step in it is just to write out your name. You pick if you wanna use all capitals or if you wanna use um, uppercase and lowercase or just lowercase, whatever you wanna do. But I want you to start off writing your name with just lines. I call this the skeleton, okay? So I'm gonna use the name Justin for my example. And so I'm just writing that, and the reason why I'm just gonna do the skeleton is because I'm working on spacing it. If I start here, I wanna make sure that I have enough space going the whole way across this little rectangle um, that I, I can fit the whole name and not run out of space or not end up with too much extra space. So if I go directly in with bubble letters, I've seen kids spend all this time on their first few letters over here and then they realize that they ran out of room and then they wasted all this time. So if you do the skeleton, it really it, it is helpful in time saving and just helpful for planning um, out to make sure you're gonna have all that space. So like I said, I'm gonna start off with just the skeleton and it might be a little bit difficult to see and you know, I have done a lot of bubble letters in the past, so I can kind of tell, okay, I'm running out of space, I wanna make this one a little bit more narrow or whatever. And so let me hold this up so you can see, there is just the, the skeleton, right? Just the lines. And again, this step is required. This is not a choice of, oh, I like to do this, I don't like to do this. I am requiring you to do this skeleton step because trust me, it saves time. Now, maybe I wanna try a different style for my next one. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do lowercase for this next one. So I'm gonna do the skeleton. And you can change the style of the bubble letters even if you've done the skeleton in a certain style. So there's my next skeleton, okay? I suggest you sketch maybe two different um, name designs and then pick one that you like to go onto good paper with. Okay, so now that I'm done with the skeleton, now I'm gonna start working on the bubble letters, right? Where is where these packets come in? So maybe I flip through here and I, I'm inspired by something that I see on here or maybe I just kinda wanna create my own style as I go. I do really like these arrows on like this one here, so I might try to work that in. Um, okay, so the way that you're going to go about doing the bubble letter part is basically think about your skeleton, you're drawing boxes around your skeleton. So it really can be as simple as that. And then obviously you can add extra you know, um, shapes and designs to add a little bit of flair to your design. But essentially, the skeleton really does also help you to figure out how to draw bubble letters. And when I drew my bubble letters, I or my skeleton, I'm sorry, um, I also drew it very lightly, and I suggest you guys do the same because you're gonna end up erasing it, right? It's really about the block letter now that we're adding around it. And so I'm gonna end up erasing the skeleton inside. But again, the skeleton is required. It's very important, very helpful. All right, so I'm gonna continue my block letters for this one. Something that you wanna consider when you are selecting your style of bubble letters or block letters is that the shapes need to be big enough inside 
for you to be able to color inside the letters. So we will be coloring inside the letters with oil pastels. And so you wanna make sure that the space inside all of your letters is big enough that you're gonna be able to do that and not make them these really skinny, skinny little letters. All right, so I finished the first one and if I really wanna get a better sense of the style of that, if I would like to quickly erase this just to kind of see this, you don't have to erase at these at this step, the skeleton, I mean. Um, you could just leave it, but I really just wanna get us a, a better idea as to do I like this or not. Um, and I'm, so I'm just very quickly erasing this. And um, I really do like it, but I still am gonna sketch out my other one really quickly. So now that I've sketched out both of my um, styles, I can pick which one I like best, and then I'm gonna move on to my good paper, and you're gonna go through the exact same process. You do not want to skip your skeleton. It's almost more important on the good paper. So I'm gonna set this here as like a guide. I am gonna go with this top design right here. Um, and. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my skeleton and I'm gonna add that on here as light as I can so that if I make any mistakes, I can easily erase it. And then I'm gonna redraw my block letters, but nice and big, as big as I can to fit on this piece of paper. Okay, here we go. Super light. Remember, skeleton should be super light. I did get everything to fit. It was a little tight over here, but that's okay. I'm generally happy with it. So now I'm gonna go in with my bubble letters with pencil. Again, light, so if I make any mistakes, it's easy to erase. Finished sketching out my bubble letters. Now I'm going to go back in and erase the skeleton. Is to take a thick sharpie and you want to outline the whole name, so all of your letters. 